The economics of land degradation study is trying to answer a very simple question. What is the severity of land degradation? What can be done for the communities, for nations and for the world to take action against land degradation? In our cropland alone, um, we are losing every year up to 20 or some 24 billion tons of soil. Soil is the most valuable uh, geo resource that we have as humanity. It's equivalent to three tons per capita per year. It means the food you, you eat is causing us three tons of soil lost, gone once for all. We are due to desertification and drought. We are transforming uh, productive land into man-made barred land up to 12 million hectares of land every year. It is equivalent to three times the size of Switzerland or it is equivalent to the size of my country, Benin. It's as if you are taking three times the size of Switzerland out of productivity every year. 1.5 billion people are affected by land degradation worldwide. That's 24% of our entire population. Almost one-fourth of land on our entire planet is degraded. Over 35 million kilometers squared. The severity of land degradation varies from one region to another, but we see the most severe land degradation in sub-Saharan Africa, especially the area below the, 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 the equator. For instance, in several African countries, gross domestic product is reduced by 3 to 5 percent because of land degradation. 17.66 percent of Senegal's land faces degradation affecting 20% of the country's entire population. We are here in uh, the department of Nyoro, in the southern part of Senegal. The problem here is about soil erosion. And this soil erosion is a result of bad practices, such as uh, the runoff caused by the reduction of land cover. People are burning the residue of crops and they cut the vegetation. Another cause is when the livestock move across the land, they accelerate degradation soil. And uh, because of the topography, water is taking off fertile parts of the soil. The farmers were collecting all the crop residues and then they burned them and then the animals come and trample on the bare soil all making the way for the water to come and wash away the soil that they have. Before the soil erosion, this village had yields of up to three tons per hectare but now they cannot even reach yields as low as one ton per hectare. The farmers are going to see less yield in the following year because of that process that we saw. So there is the need of having, giving them knowledge on the proper management of, of, of soils and that's where they can change their, their, their practices. I think what we first need to, to understand is the cost of inaction uh, and the benefit of action. It costs money to prevent land degradation. It costs money to remobilize from reverting degraded land into productive land. But um, those costs are much lower than letting a degradation take its course. I think there is still some way to go for the economists to get to grips with the multiple benefits of these investments in natural resource management. And if they can do so, we can have, will have better data to convince ministers of finance in each country that it is economically rational to invest in natural resources. 1.34% of Uzbekistan's land faces degradation, affecting 2.22% of the country's entire population. Salinity is a very severe problem. It is more severe in Central Asia than any other place in the world. Why? It's because it's a dry area and they depend very much on irrigation. 
So you can see these are the white, these are salt. If you come after two or three days, so this land will be like a, a white, snowed land. The salt is coming out now. This is the salinity. Now it's getting very tough or hard. After three or four days, it will be like a stone. It will uh, negatively affect the yield or plant. There are two major, major uh, areas that uh, one can address the problem of salinity. One is uh, breeding. and uh, There is a breeding program that are done by ICADA uh, to breed for varieties of wheat and other crops that are resistant to, to salinity. Today, we came to the uh, Sidaria province of Uzbekistan to see ecological trial of wheat. Here we have planted 38 varieties of wheat and uh, barley. They checking in this condition, this saline condition, which is, is better. Best one will go to state variety testing commission for further uh, releasing of these varieties. In present, 1.1 million hectare wheat planted in irrigated area and another 250,000 in rain fit area. And in our condition, the farmers received more than 7 tons per hectare from this variety. Even uh, shortage of water giving good yield. Well, the Senegal is also suffering from the problem of salinity. But at the same time, they're also taking some actions uh, like planting trees and also drainage system that can drain away salinity and also planting some grasses and other plantations that can also absorb the, the, the salinity that we see. We are here in the valley of Simal, uh, where the big deal is the uh, salinity of the soil. The degree of salinity is uh, higher than the ocean. Nothing can grow in this area. The problem of salinization is a big uh, question. It requires that different partners to be together to fight against it. In total, 700 hectares of land in the Valley of Simal were affected by salinity. However, through the construction of a barrier and other interventions, farmers were able to rehabilitate 500 of these hectares. Somebody tell me, yeah. this area, what, what, how different is it from the other area that we just saw, the other side? Yes, this one was uh, as salty as uh, the first one. Okay. But uh, when people intervened, uh -huh. uh, they rehabilitated. Okay. And now they they, they work growing. here and they are growing okay. crops, rice okay. especially. And they have actually gone back farming in an area which was abandoned in the past. So it tells us a story that yes, even areas which are no longer usable, they are, have been abandoned, can be reclaimed. And that's what we saw. Among that, those efforts, I mean, when you're very poor, um, you're trying to find anything that you can invest in that will you know, reduce your vulnerability, improve your incomes. And so, and it's kind of an obvious, or I mean, it seems kind of an obvious thing to focus on um, natural resource management. The majority of the poor in the world are in rural areas. The majority of them are poor because their assets are underperforming, mean they are degraded. If we really mean that we want to also address food security, then invest in, in, uh, in a way to uh, ensure that we improve the condition of the underperforming asset of the poor will help to uh, address the issue in a much more effective manner. What uh, needs to be done at the global level is to provide the information where land degradation is particularly negative and to mobilize the resources to address the problem. That means also money, but most importantly to make sure that land rights are assured for poor people, that uh, the uh, water and land use, because water matters a lot for land degradation, are shifted to sustainability. So we need globally strong incentives for sustainable land management. 1.78% of Niger's land faces degradation, affecting 6.61% of the entire population. Niger is a country which is very interesting. 
is the poorest country in the world. But it has done something which is very interesting, that it has overcome the problem of land degradation in some areas. And that tells us a very strong story that, well, land degradation can be uh, addressed even among the poorest uh, people in the world. This site, uh, we, call, uh, we call the area here uh, Sake Kwarategi, is in Nkolo department. It was established in March 2005. We introduced uh, some hub species like some Bokopogon, Andropogon, and some other tree species, uh, like five tree species, Bohinia, Rufesans, Acacia, Senegal, Acacia, Seyal, and many other local species. But um, some of the species, like Gera Senegalensis, are spontaneous. Uh, they, they grow here spontaneously. We find them here. We don't introduce anything from it. To see the difference between the treatment, the, the treatment and why we don't do anything. So you see, it's still bare. Water runoff is very intense here, whereas all the water that falls is catch within the catchment, the water catchment area. Yeah, because it's a hard pan. Yeah, this is a hard pan, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's a hard pan. Here yeah. it has been worked, the water is trapped, and the vegetation do grow very well. Regreening by farmers produces multiple impacts. It has a positive impact on crop yields. It has a positive impact on household energy. It has a positive impact on, on uh, the local climate. People in these villages were able to harvest greater fodder for their livestock. And uh, we found on average that that um, had a rate of return. Depending on how you invest, uh, estimated the, the fodder value, the rate of return was at least 28% on average. It could have been as high as 45% on average. Rainfall helps, of course, a process of regreening. But human management of vegetation seems to be a more determining factor for success than rainfall. What is very important, what's very important about this site is uh, the community are so much engaged in protecting uh, the, the site. It has a history. Oh. The village is not far, it's less than one kilometer. Okay. Animals do come here. So the villagers agree that uh, for at least two or three seasons, rainy season, no animal will be here. Niger's government has been very supportive of the local population, recognizing that involving the people in decision making is essential in combating the country's land degradation. During the last food crisis in 2011, the government of Niger spent about 25 billion in recuperating lands in the areas where they were most affected. With just little means, they made a lot of effort, and much of the population was involved in this process of recuperating land. This one they are calling the volunteer trees. They just grow anywhere, but they need protection. If they are not protected against the animals and all that, they, can, they cannot establish themselves uh, to an extent of uh, stopping soil erosion. So this is the case where we have seen the village that we just visited. The farmers were able to protect the trees and they were able to establish a very healthy woodlot. Farmer managed natural regeneration. In the last two decades or so, more than five million hectares of land has been regenerated. And it has had implication in food security of the population, their resilience to uh, climatic shocks. And at the same time, it has improved the water table. A, a woman told me that, sir, you know, 10 years ago, I used to work almost a full day to fetch water. Nowadays, I need not to, to, to have such burden. The most important asset that most people have in developing countries is their land. Let us use every acre of land the best way possible. I think the world should care uh, much more about land degradation than it actually does. Why do we care about poverty in Africa? You know, because partly because I don't like living in a world where people are going to bed hungry at night. You know, and I would like to quote um, a British environmental journalist, Geoffrey Lean: "Mankind is ten inches from oblivion." So, stress emphasizing the point, we are really dependent on soil fertility. It's not dirt, 
is soil. In fact, someone says that the worm that is actually uh, working at, uh, in the soil is so important that in every city we need to build some status and some statue to the, to the worm to celebrate their work and express our acknowledgement to, 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 you know, to them. Unless we adequately manage soil fertility, there will be little future for, for, the, for the world population.